Hello, Jonathan Landeros for Kativ Technologies. In this video, I'm going to talk about the steps that it takes to migrate from Autodesk Vault 2014 to Autodesk Vault 2015. Now before I get started, I'm going to talk about some of the things that you should consider as you're planning your migration. First and foremost, make sure you have a valid Vault backup. I'm serious about this. Check it. Be sure. I've never had a migration go south on me. But you don't want to be the first. You don't want to be the one going to your boss how explaining the good news is you now have an opportunity for a clean slate and a lot of hard drive room to put that new data on. Next, plan for some server downtime. The server may need to be rebooted during this time. Migrations take time. So there's likely, in spite of your best efforts, going to be some time that the server is down. So make sure to accommodate for this. You don't want to see the engineering department coming for your office with torches and pitchforks. Even if they're a lazy engineering department, they'll at least find disposable lighters and sporks. Either way, that's a bad scene. Plan ahead. Also remember, Vault can run one version back of the associated client product. For example, Vault 2015 will run Inventor 2014 and AutoCAD 2014. Vault 2014 would run Inventor 2013 and AutoCAD 2013. You can take this as an opportunity to upgrade the server and then update the clients a little later. That'll help mitigate some of that downtime. You still should plan for that though. Remember, disposable lighters and sporks. Now not everybody has the resources for this, but if you do, consider a test environment. Create a virtual machine, install the Vault server, restore a backup. If you have an old machine that's maybe decommissioned but just good enough to handle the Vault server installation and the backup, give it a try. Encounter errors offline so you can plan ahead for them. Then you come off looking like a superstar versus slipping away in the middle of the night before anybody notices. I do like option one much better myself. And finally, did you check that backup? I mean it. Really check it. Once you've accommodated for all of those things, you're ready to go ahead and go with the deployment. That's it. It's go time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click the setup.exe on my installation media or download. I'm using Factory Design Suite Ultimate, but many of the design suites, if not all of them, do contain Fault Server. The steps will be very similar. Once I see my screen come up, I'm going to choose the Install Tools and Utilities option to go ahead and locate my Vault server. First, we'll see the End User License Agreement. That's all that legal stuff that we should read. I'm going to accept it and click Next. Now, I'm going to see a message that states an upgradable version of the data management server was found, and I'm given the options to use the server configuration from my existing installation or create a new default configuration. I'm doing an upgrade here so I want to reuse all that old data that I want to keep current. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the existing installation and hit OK. Now I have an opportunity to choose which programs I'm going to install. I do want the Vault Basic server. I may or may not want my content center libraries on the server. Depends on your options. I'm going with desktop content, so I'm not using this. Important note here, though, if I hover over the little information icon, I can see that remote content center libraries are available for download, so I can download these by clicking the link and going to the web page. That's something to be aware of if you're going with content and vault. Next is the network license manager. Uh, this is not allowing me to install it because I already have another version on my machine. I'm not messing with that right now, so I'm going to leave it. Next is the Autodesk CAD Manager tools, which lets you manage software inventory and deployment and so on. That's a topic for a different day. Next, my Autodesk Content Service will be shown. This is already installed with my previous version of Factory Design Suite, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on. This is everything I want pretty much the way it is, so I'm going to go with it. But remember, your installation may vary a little bit. I am going to go ahead and switch from my C drive to my D drive as my installation drive. Just because my C drive is a small drive, my D drive is my larger data drive. Once that's done, 
I can go ahead and hit install and I'm ready to fire off my installation. Now the fun begins. The first thing I'm going to see is an advisory that an existing database has been detected. If I move on, it's going to migrate it. Well, that's what I want. Next, I see the ADMS system check. That's going to make sure there's no issues I need to resolve on my machine. Mine, of course, goes swimmingly, but if you see any errors or warnings, you should take a look at them and make sure they're addressed. After this, the installation will remove my old data management server, my 2014. Next, it'll go ahead and install the Vault Basic 2015 server, so now we're putting the new stuff on. That's awesome. And it'll go ahead and proceed and put on some of the utilities that we see in the background, C++ utilities and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and accelerate time a little bit to voila, we're done. At least with the installation, you do have a couple more things you have to do. That's next. Now, I'm going to start my Autodesk Data Management Console 2015. Don't forget this step, it's pretty important. Why is it important? We'll see once the Data Management Console starts. More migration begins to happen. These are all my databases that exist. I don't have a password on my vault, but you should. Do as I say, not as I do. And then I can continue to my migration. Now depending on your database size, this can take a while, so this is one of those things you want to be ready for. My database is very small, so it happens pretty quickly. It'll also migrate any custom databases that I have, of which I have a couple. And then, it's going to want to know which versions I want to use my custom libraries with. Remember, Vault will work with one version back of Inventor, for example, so do I want to use this with 2014 as well? Depends on what you're doing. If you don't, then you can eliminate this. I do use 2014 and I do intend to continue doing so for a while, so I will make sure that I keep a custom library for 2014 as well as a library for 2015. I'll hit OK, I get a confirmation screen, and now I can go ahead and complete my migration. Now that that's completed, my vault is at last ready to use. But still, there is one really important step. You know that backup I've been harping about? Any scripts you have running your vault backup aren't going to work. You'll have to make sure that they work with 2015, mostly by editing paths and such. But check it. And double check it. So that's it. The steps for migrating from Autodesk Vault 2014 to 2015. I hope you find them helpful. They are really important. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.